listening to the Bleach Brothers Podcast. Come get cleansed. Welcome to the Bleach Brothers Podcast. This is B-Word and Jake. What the fuck is going on with our intro? Dude, so, uh, you know, fan interactions, man. That's actually fellow podcasters. That's AJ or AKA The Stoned as he goes by who's, uh, you know. The Stoned? He goes by The Stoned. So they have what? The the Dome, the Gnome, and the Stone, or as I call the Illiterate, the Granite, and the Midget. Um <laughs> I've renamed them, but little person. Yeah, they're from little Dads person. on Dayquil, so I know that we've thrown them out. They've thrown yep. us our names out. Uh, you know, I enjoy their stuff. Very similar type shows, uh, just them three dudes. But he uh, he sent that to me saying he wanted to record an intro, which I told him no problem. And then, but why not just use this now, right? <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. No, it's actually kind of cool when we get uh, different fan interaction like that. Obviously, we want to. Uh, shout them out dad's on day quill you can check them out on uh apple uh apple podcasts and spotify and some other platforms uh they're kind of a fun show uh definitely you got to have a good sense of humor and if you're listening to this you already have that sense of humor so it's a good fit exactly and maybe on pornhub i don't know they might be on pornhub or only i'm always saying i hope i i think people are on only fans but i don't really know because i don't i'm not an only fans person are you b-word no dude i don't even have a tiktok Oh, I don't have a TikTok. So, I'm definitely not that cool. My daughter has one. Yeah. All I do is I go up in public and I yell out TikTok and gyrate around like, you know, a mental person and <laughs> she gets so embarrassed. Yeah. But Well, it's so funny too, because like I have these adult friends of mine that are, you know, in their, in their mid to late thirties that will send me TikToks and I just refuse to watch them. Like there, there's no point in me watching a TikTok, but here's, what's really funny is that I'll go onto Instagram and I'll watch the reels, mm-hmm. which are basically TikToks. Right. And then I get so much shit because people are like, oh, well, you're watching TikToks anyway. And it's like, no, I'm not. I'm watching Reels, which translate to Vines because that's where that's where we come from, right? Vines, right. like do it for the Vine. So, yeah, fuck TikTok. That's no, I, I well, my brother-in-law, I will say this. So I don't mind. I have friends who are, I guess, getting big on TikTok and, you know, a lot of people. But I, I feel like it's like the, you know, like when all your friends like can't, <laughs> how am I trying to put this with jobs? You know the number one job out there for people like in our age demographic at this point when nothing else has worked? What is that B-word? Unemployment. Well, besides that right now, but like what what career do they usually jump into that they, they think that, you know, they're going to make the most money really quick bang for their buck? Multi-level marketing. Okay, I'll give you that. I was going to say realtor because <laughs> oh. I think people get in that zone where like, you know, mid-30s are like, well, what else am I going to do? And they go and try to be a realtor, right? Um, I feel that way with TikTokers now. It's like they can't get anything else. They're like, oh, I'll just make a bunch of 20 second or what. I don't know how long they are. The clips and I'm going to get huge. But like I I appreciate some because people send me some and there's some that I watch. I'm like, yeah, that's good. You know, like especially I get to send a lot of food ones and I enjoy that. But like my brother-in-law, I made fun of so hard when I went there last summer and hung out. And then he. Wait, wait, one of our bleach bros. No, no, no. My brother-in-law, Jimmy. Oh, I went to his house and I was making fun of him. And all of a sudden he goes, Jake, just watch one of mine. And he sent it. And dude, I could not stop laughing my balls off. And here's why. You you haven't met my brother-in-law, have you? I have not. Okay, so Jimmy's like, I've described him on the show before, but he's crazy, right? But he went on Amazon and bought like this shark puppet for like (laughs) $3 and just made a simple video of the shark singing like this obnoxious song. And it's one of those TikToks that's like addictive. He's got so many views on it, but it's like he, you know, he's got like six videos. He doesn't like go out and try to make a ton of them. He just was like, right. I was sitting there bored one night drinking, and figured this was a great idea. I love Sharky, and I, I literally wanted to go buy one of those sharks after that. So I appreciate what TikTok can be. You know, it's like YouTube. Like you know, everybody wanted to start a YouTube, and then you had those people that gave up after ten videos or whatever. But I don't know. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I'm just not going to download it. I'm not going to support a lot of it. I'll watch a few videos here and there, but I'm not really into it. 
Or it's like those podcasters that are up to like what sixteen or seventeen episodes now that just aren't giving up. That people are just like, "Well, you guys just stop." Yeah, we're at, are we at fifteen right now, or what are we at? I think we're at like seventeen. Okay, so but we gotta I'd give have up to check. Tonight. After tonight, we give up, right? Is it? Well, <laughs> Is that... I mean, until next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So speaking of like social media, like YouTube and TikToks and stuff. Okay. Like I'm really happy that social media like and especially like on the phones and the easy access on the phones wasn't a thing when when I was younger like especially my early 20s so you're my you're like one of my oldest friends right so we met in grade school well I met somebody one year after we met and his name will remain anonymous we'll just call him Fred for now okay um but I've known so I've known Fred Literally almost all my life. Okay. But um, but Fred ended up getting a nickname when we were in our early 20s. So let me back up and let me, let me kind of tell you the story of Fred. So Fred has, uh, Fred's adopted and it's always, and, and the reason why I bring that up is because it's always kind of been a big thing for him. Like mm -hmm. he never really knew who his parents were, were and like it was always a significant moment in his life. And, and so, but his, his dad was our, was our um, grade school teacher and so, like, his family was really cool, but he, um, like, I think that, that being adopted really affected him in a negative way. And so he was always kind of a weird dude. Like, he was either one that would get picked on or would try to, be, try to pick on people, but then would get picked on in return, you know? So he was always kind of an odd dude, but we, you know, we were always friends, and, and uh, you know, we lost touch right around high school, and then... Um, I ended up getting back in touch with him in my early 20s to find out that he had been married and uh, divorced. And it shocked me. And then it came, come to find out, like, there was a three-year span of time from the moment he was divorced until we reconnected that he had not had the booty. Have you ever gone three years? No. No, I've, yeah, I've, I've never had a dry lake bed for my sex life. I am telling you what, man, I, you know, you get a little dry spell and it's great, but, but three years like that, my man needed some loving. So what I did is I, uh, I invited, I used to throw, you know, house parties and stuff back then. And so I invited, you know, some of my single female friends to come over and maybe kind of network with them and, you know, have them shoot a shot. You know, there's no real, real wrong there, you know, and, uh, he just was not very good with the ladies. And so, um, we ended up taking him to a strip club, mm -hmm. uh, that same weekend, which one, and yeah. it was, it was just this nasty one. So here in, so here in Northern Nevada, they have brothels Yeah. and this, this strip club, I don't even remember what it was called. I think it's called something entirely different. Now this strip club was right next to a brothel and, uh, it was gross. Like you have like the varsity squad and this is like the JV's JV. It was just nasty. But we had a, we had a buddy of ours who was a bartender and on Sundays he would actually invite us to, to be in the crowd and, and it was free drinks. Like we had free handful of drinks or whatever while we were there. Okay. So that way they were actually, they would, they could actually do tryouts with people in the audience. So it was one of these Sundays. And so we go and we're, we're doing this. Uh, tryout festival or whatever you want to call it in a strip club, and we're drinking kamikazes. Okay. And uh, so I'm like three or four kamikazes in at this point. You know what I love about you, B-Word? I'm going to stop you here real quick. When you do have a story about you drinking, you my favorite is you always have a certain mixed drink that you are having, like sucrose acid, Jaeger bombs with me, kamikazes. It's just, I don't know. I just I wanted to point that out. I like it, so keep going. Sorry, but yeah. Kamikazes. Uh, no, I did... It's correct, man. I and actually I still love kamikazes to this day, but uh, kamikazes. So we had we had about three or four kamikazes at this point, and uh, there was you know there was this this dancer who was trying out, and she's you know kind of a larger girl, but she can she could move around the around the pole if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, poor Fred, he didn't have any money, and so um, I ended up Shocker. giving him twenty five bucks, <laughs> so that way he can sit there and do whatever he wants to do in the front row. Well, he spent all $25 on this big girl. Now, let me set this up for you. She has blonde hair. Mm -hmm. She has a pug nose. And she's, she's a big girl. And there is a, um, there's a light source above the stage that will, you know, like put a spotlight on her. But for everybody else, 
like there's just these traveling neon lights that hit the audience, right? Right. And she's dancing to Freebird, which is like the world's longest song when you're trying to avoid it. And uh, so in, in my moment of, you know, four kamikazes, I look into the audience and I see the white spotlight on her and a green light on him. <laughs> and it instantly became Kermit and Miss Piggy. Oh, this is glorious. And so, so Fred was was therefore named the Kerm, or Kermit, or Kermetheus, or if you're speaking Spanish, uh, Kermit la pinche raña. And uh, so, but yeah, Joan. so it was... Yeah, it was just a thing with nicknames, but he hated that nickname originally, and then I think he adopted it, and really he's kind of gone off the deep end. He's been a little crazy, so I haven't heard from him in years. But uh, but yeah, man, I mean, you ever have anybody get a nickname like that? Yeah, I've had a lot of that. I, I actually know the Kerm. I met the Kerm once. You introduced you me. You have met the Kerm. Um, yeah. And it was everything that you were describing I could see, because all I remember is I met him, and he has me get into his truck to drive us somewhere. <laughs> I and I jump that, in the yeah. front seat and it's soaking wet only on the passenger <laughs> side. <laughs> and I jump up and he goes, oh yeah, the seat's wet. And I look down and I go, from what? And he just smiled and said, sit down. And I, to this yeah. day, no, you don't know. I don't know. My ex-girlfriend at the time who was sitting on my lap, nobody knows why his seat was, there wasn't an ice chest. There wasn't any drinks. There was nothing. Just no. a half wet seat in a truck yeah. and drove to the middle of nowhere for a beer pong party that I got too hammered for and got kicked out of. But that's besides yes, the did. point. So I know but the Kerm. Y- yes, you did. But you actually you actually accosted the Kerm at that party, if I remember. And uh, he uh, he cowboyed down. He he was he was kind of scared of you because you were you know you were a little demon back in those days. Well, I because here's the thing I can I can talk some shit we know that, but oh, yeah. if I'm talking shit because we were it, the thing was I was talking shit because we were playing beer pong and I don't like losing and it wasn't that I was losing I was just talking so much shit it was pissing everybody off and then when somebody tries to say something then I, yeah I turn into a a mean devil and I got <laughs> real angry. Well, what I thought was really because uh, I completely forgot about this story that you that you actually met the Kerm. Yeah. But um, what I remember is that, you know, Kerm wanted to, Kerm didn't know if he wanted to be a biker or if he wanted to be a cowboy. And so he had these, you know, real tight Wranglers on, these nut hugging Wranglers, mm-hmm. you know, with like a, with like a big belt, yeah. belt buckle, you know. But then he had biker boots on with like a Larry the Cable Guy flannel. And I'm like, what, what do you, what's the look you're going for here, bro? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? And I'm pretty sure you actually called him like, like a Walmart version of Larry the Cable Guy. There was there was a lot that I called him that night, and there were some things that will yeah. not be repeated. Because the funny thing was, too, he was at, you guys all met me at my parents, uh, it was at the time, my mom and my stepdad's, like, wedding anniversary party or oh, whatever. Oh, yeah, no, 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 I think they got married that day. No, they were already married, it was an anniversary party. But the thing is, my stepdad was a biker, and all his biker buddies were there, so when the Kerm showed up, we saw Larry the Cable moped fuck walk in. <laughs> And everybody <laughs> looks at him, and it's like, that's why you were just like, oh, shit. And I actually, I'm going to post these. I have some funny photos of me and you that night, B-Word, to show <laughs> right? our broness, like how close we are. But there's one in particular that when I sent this to you the other night, you were like, what the hell are we doing? And I don't know if I'm doing yeah. a rendition of, oh, brother, where art thou in your own pants or what's happening? But it, it's pretty uh, I questionable, don't know. I don't know. and I'm enjoying it. I know drinks uh, were had, so... Honestly, I think uh, Law and Order SVU could have been called that night on what you were trying to do to me. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, I would, I would but, agree with you. Yeah, but speaking, of, so yeah. I want to go back to something. Oh, brothels. Yes. Did I ever tell you the story of me and my sister at a brothel? <laughs> okay. No. So we know me. Anytime something happens in my life, it's crazy, over the top, and ridiculous, right? So I used to do the drive back and forth between Reno and Pahrump or Vegas, right? The whole eight and a half or mm-hmm. whatever hours, middle of nowhere. Seven and a half, eight hours. Yeah, right. like just desolate desert road, right? Right. So at the time in college, I had a Buick Regal, okay? Oh, God. But I had a two-door Buick Regal with the V8 in it because they made that. And I got this car because, I, I, you know this, my brother destroys cars, and he destroyed three of mine, right. so I needed a car. So I bought this off my cousin, and I'm driving back. With my sister, and I think it was for Thanksgiving week, something like that, right, from college. And uh, we break down. 
I think it was in between Tonopah and Goldmine, right? Goldfield? Goldfield, sorry. In the middle of nowhere, right? And all there is is a little red light maybe a half mile or so down the road. And yeah. coming from the like me and you, we know what that means. If there's a trailer in the oh, middle yeah. of nowhere oh, and a red yeah. light, and I know people know like the red and there's light. There's a bunch of truckers that. that have C CB- there's a bunch of truckers that have CBs that communicate with them. Yep. So we me and my sister decide to h- hoof it down there and see if they got a phone because this is before the whole s- even if you had a cell phone, you can't get a hold of anybody, right? This is why right. landline phones were great. You could still call somebody. You didn't need service. So we, we walk down and we walk in and I think it was like the kitty cat parlor at the time or something, something like that. It had something to do with cats and not, you know, the kind that you want to see. And uh, we walk in and you've been in a brothel before, right, B-Word? Unfortunately. Okay. So when you go in for people that have in, they you'll get the lineup. And by the lineup, the owner will usually get all the women to stand like army, like a drill sergeant, they'll all line up and you sort of get to choose what you want and stuff, right? Well, this place must have been like barely seeing people lately because they they were right at attention right when we walked in the door. And uh, they run over and they start talking to us. And I'm like, hey, I just I just need to use a phone. And they're like, no, no. And they're talking and talking. And I'm like, hey, you know, I don't, I don't want any funny business. I don't want to do anything. And they're like, oh, well, you and your girl. I was like, actually, that's my sister. And I'll never forget this to this day. The owner just looks at me, <laughs> pulls his hands out of his pocket, puts his arm around me, goes, we don't judge here. Do whatever the hell you want to do. <laughs> and I just went, I just want a phone. <laughs> and so I'm sitting at a brothel bar, not of age. Everybody trying to get me and my sister to sleep with these people at the same time. My sister just, you've met my sister, just confused as hell. And I'm on the phone calling my mama to get her to come and pick us up at a brothel in the middle of nowhere because our cars (laughs) broke down. It's nighttime. And I swear, all the girls there, I I pretty much, I probably got got a pity lay that night. Because I think oh, they were just like, what is what is happening? But when he looked at me and says, I don't care if your sister is involved and you're involved, do whatever the hell you want. We don't judge. I will never forget that till the day I die. <laughs> That's hilarious. See, and actually with with the Kerm, right? So he hadn't he hadn't had the touch of a woman in at least three years. He probably had the touch of a sheep, though. So, I mean, there may have been <laughs> something there. But um, But he hadn't been, you know intimate with anybody in in at least three years so what after we took him to the uh to the strip club he um you know right next door was the brothel and i'm like oh this is going to be funny so we ended up taking him into the brothel and he took like three ladies with him and like i think that there was probably 12 teeth uh for everybody that was involved in that whole situation and they went into the back room and the funny part is as i already said he didn't have any money and so he comes back out and he's like, oh, man, what they want to do is going to cost thirty five hundred bucks. <laughs> what I'm the like, hell were well, they going to do? <laughs> I will not give him investment advice. Yeah. I'll tell you that much. And so um, I said, well, that's not going to work. And so we, <laughs> we walk out and, and we're with my buddy OMP, which stands for Old Man Pat. I think I talked with him before. She's got him legs. Before. <laughs> yep. yep. But uh, so, you know, right across the street was another one. And so we took uh, we took old Kermetheus over to the uh, over to the other one, and he ends up finding this lady over there who gives him like a little walkthrough on whatever. And he comes up to me and he's like, "What she wants to do is co- going to cost a hundred bucks." Dude, you went discount point, brothel shopping. If that doesn't scream yeah, gone to her Pacific yeah. I don't know what does. Yeah, no, it, it for sure does. I mean, I think Sloth from the Goonies was born there. I'm just going to be <laughs> quite honest. With you. A roof, a roof. <laughs> yep, abs- <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I'm wait, like, hold on. Well, when he finished, was he like, "Hey, you guys"? <laughs> well, well, well. Let me get to that because Sorry. I think it's gonna be. I, I think it's gonna be a phenomenal little ending here. Probably not a happy ending, but a phenomenal little, little ending. So I was smart, right? I only took cash with me to the strip club. Okay. And so you know, my buddy, my buddy OMP was driving us around, and uh, I I looked at OMP and I said, "Hey." This is my buddy for like, at at the time, it's been like 17 years or whatever. And I'm like, for the last three, he hasn't even been kissed. Like, I feel like I kind of owe it to him at this point. But, I, but you know, I don't have the cash. Like, I already spent the cash. And he's like, don't worry. I got it. I got plastic. And I'm like, look, I'll pay you back. He's like, I got it. I got plastic. Okay. So, Kerm and the OMP go into the back room and they're doing whatever they're doing. And I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to sit at the bar and have a drink. 
I no sooner order a drink and the drink is set in front of me than then Kermit and OMP <laughs> come out. And I'm like, wow, that was fast. Yeah, they didn't accept American Express. Oh, my God. So... <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that that would be. Remember those commercials back in the day? Oh, too bad they don't accept American Express. That would have been the greatest uh, commercial back then. Oh, it would have been a phenomenal commercial. So yeah, uh, moral of the story, kids. Uh, make sure that you have a Visa or a Mastercard sometimes. Yeah, moral know? of the story: when you pay your hooker, have cash. That's, that's <laughs> yeah, what you're trying to say too. B word. That too. Oh my god. Oh man. So earlier this week. Uh, we, we talked about this, uh, this little, um, thing that we've, we've got on our socials. It's, uh, you know, those games where it's like, choose the different rows, choose somebody out of each row or whatever yeah. for, uh, for a certain dollar amount. So, so, uh, on our, on all of our socials, we've got, um, you know, ch- choosing basically which MCU character, so Marvel Cinematic Universe character or characters otherwise, that uh, that you want to get together for a super team for fifteen dollars, and uh, I think that this is going to be a, 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 an interesting scenario because I'm not sure that you and I are anywhere close in our lineups. Well, I'm already so, mad at this question. I'm just I'm okay. just gonna throw this out there because obviously they needed all of them to defeat him, so you can spend fifteen dollars because we've seen these things like you know row one is five dollars and then the bottom row is a dollar and you gotta pick right. and choose but I mean all these characters combined had a hard time kicking his ass so you're gonna you're gonna spend fifteen dollars and beat him get the hell out of here but anyways I'll I'll play along with this game I'll do it okay but okay I I'm interested to hear what your your picks are B word to, to okay. have your super team Okay, so I'm going to pick one from each row. So obviously, in this scenario, it doesn't say that you have to pick one from each row. It just says you have $15. Pick who you want. Right. So I'm going to go. I'm going to start from the bottom up. I'm going to go with Falcon. I'm going to go with Scarlet Witch. Doctor Strange. Black Panther. And Captain Marvel. And why is this? So, of the bottom row, Falcon is the only one, I mean, aside from Mantis, is the only one who really has abilities, more or less. So, that one was an easy choice. Okay. Uh, Scarlet Witch is a Nexus being, my man. Yeah, I don't and understand so why she's only $2. her power is not defined yet. I know. Well, th- because, you know, she's a, she's a JV team, of the JV team, oh, right? Whatever. Uh, at least in this scenario, whoever put this thing together. <laughs> so, so, Scarlet Witch is the most powerful in that row. Doctor Strange, I, I it was actually a toss up between Doctor Strange or Vision, um, but since I already took Scar- Scarlet Witch, I'm, I'm, I took Doctor Strange on this one because I kind of figure that um, Doctor Strange can be more of a guide um, to to Scarlet Witch as well. Um, Black Panther, I think, has more discipline and more strength than everybody in that next row. Okay. Um, although I was leaning Spidey, to be honest with you. And then Captain Marvel again is the most powerful in that row, okay, and so, so that's so that's why I went there. You just went like magic and power. It looks like that's it, dude. That's it. I just want ass kicking abilities. So I'm gonna just pick all of the two dollar row and all the one dollar row, and the main reason is is because Thanos wasn't wrong. I am totally on Thanos' side to snap half the universe gone. I don't care. I think he was right. <laughs> so. I'm going to put up the crappiest of crappiest team against him because I want Thanos to win. But, I mean, if I have to really play along, I guess I'm just going to pick um, Hulk and Captain America from the top row. So there's 10 bucks gone. Okay. Doctor Strange and Scarlet Witch. So there, I'm going to pick four people for 15 bucks if I really have to because Hulk's strong enough and he didn't actually get to fight him. Captain America, I need a leader. And then Magic and Nexus Beam. So... I figured those four could probably do some damage. Okay, uh, yeah, that's that's fair. But yeah, no, I mean, as I stated earlier, though, Thanos did nothing wrong, so I'm totally for Thanos snapping the universe. <laughs> so I do not care if um, all of, I, as I said, you know, I'd pick the first two rows just because I don't care. <laughs> I want him to win. Right. I'm good with all that, dude. So, um, I, so we also talked about this thing earlier this week that I think would be pretty fun. 
and it's kind of in the same in the same vein, if you will, of these this little game with the MCU, and it's and it's explain a um, explain a movie plot badly. Have you heard of this? Yeah, I've seen a few of these. Um, I don't. I've, I haven't really made many. And I've read a few of them, but I get it. Like, you know what I mean? It's a pretty funny basic premise. It reminds me, did you used to watch that show At Midnight? No. On Comedy Central? So they used to do games like this all the time on, like, Twitter. And, like, it would be, like, you know, name a, a book but put dogs in the title instead. So, yeah, name a, ba- a bad – do the movie plot but do it in a poor way. But it still describes the whole movie, right? So did you prepare any for tonight's for tonight's show? I did because you sent me the list, so I, I prepared a few, and I figured I would throw some your way, you'd throw some my way. We see if we get them correct. Uh, yeah, absolutely. All you right. want to start off with one real quick? Yeah. So, um, two dogs die, and hilarity ensues. Two dogs die, and hilarity ensues. Because it's always funny when dogs die, apparently, right? Well, not if it's not if it's all <laughs> dogs go to heaven. Ah, good job. Oh, is that what it is? Yeah, good job. All right. So I have one here. Okay. Um, so a kid is so lonely for friends, he had a hallucinatory adventure with his playthings. Uh, Toy Story. Good job. Yeah, that one. Um, three dudes go on a fishing trip. Boat sinks. Without a paddle? No, Jaws. Oh, okay, okay. Um, delivery guy and a football get lost in the high seas. Uh, castaway. Yes, sir. Yeah. Two dudes wearing underwear on their exterior fight. Mama has same name. Two, repeat that? Two dudes with underwear on the outside of their clothing fight. Mama has the same name. I know what you're talking about. That's (laughs) Batman versus Superman, Dawn of Justice. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. Oh, thank you. (laughs) All right. So he's finished just when she finally gets wet. (laughs) He finishes just when she finally gets wet? Uh Uh-huh. I don't know. Titanic. (laughs) (laughs) This is my favorite one. Because it is... Oh, how great. <laughs> All right. Um, an impulsive girl discovers a magical land where she is an annoyance to everybody she meets. Oh, is that um, an annoyance? So that'd be like the Wizard of Oz. No. Close, though. It's Alice in Wonderland. Oh, okay. Alice in Wonderland. Okay. All right. So um, a gem collector seeks to solve political problems. Romancing the Stone? Nope. Oh, Infinity Thanos. War. <laughs> yep. I just thought of it. I was just on his side, too. Oh, long live the snap. Oh, guy wants to bang Siri. Oh, 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 I know what the movie is, but I don't. Oh, God, what's the name? It's with um, it's with the guy who played Joker. Um, Her. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You, have you okay. seen that movie? No, but I know what oh, the, I know what the premise is. Watch that movie; it's so great. <laughs> I is it? love that movie. Oh yeah, I think that movie is amazing. My wife like did wasn't as much of a fan of it, not just because it's a slow burn, but I think she's just like, really, would a guy do that? I'm thinking, yeah, a guy would do that. Theory of two <laughs> on that, real quick. Have you ever seen Lars and the Real Girl? No, uh, no, but I've heard, no. Okay, no, I haven't so even heard that, of that. They came out around the same time. So Lars and the Real Girl is with Ryan Gosling, and he wants to, like, he date, or he's dating, and the whole town is supportive of it. He's dating, like, a, a sex doll that he orders online. Oh. Her is a dude ordering a program that he falls in love with. So in the sense, like, they're both dating inanimate, almost, like, objects, right? Except one has AI. But it's they're both funny in their own way. And I saw them both around the same time because that's when I saw the previews for both of them. And I was like, oh, okay, so Theory of Two there. Oh, okay. Okay. So what else you got? Whosoever kills this Santa, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of the claws. The Santa claws. I love it. I love it. (laughs) Two dudes make female cleaning products. One might not be real. 
two dudes make female cleaning products and one might not be real. Mm -hmm. The only, the only, and it's not this, but the only thing that's coming to mind is weird science. No, it's Fight Club. Oh yeah. Okay. And they make soap out of women's, my favorite part of that is they make soap out of women's fat. And when right. and when Tyler Durden go, or Edward Norton goes, we're selling these women's fat asses back to him. I'm just like, right. dude, that is just a bit. That that's the that's one of the best fuck yous in a moment in a history. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So let's see, because I have a couple more here. Okay. So, um, oh, which one do I want to give you? Young couple discover they can't shag because they're brother and sister, so they decide to kill their dad. A I young told couple. My story. <laughs> a young couple disco- discover that they can't shag because they they are brother and sister, so they decide to kill their dad. Uh, I don't know. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Empire, bro. That is Empire. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's so great, dude. Because I'm just sitting there thinking, <laughs> who wants to bang each other that are brother and sister? And then it's like here's 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 why I'm gonna I'm gonna I want to go on this one real quick. Okay. Here's why I didn't really think that they don't really like talk about that. No. They they it's never bring addressed. it back up. It's no. just like oh they kissed and then just like anything with George Lucas he's like ah oh, just ignore it move on. Yeah. Just move on and it's like going no dude we need to talk about that and he's just like no you don't nobody wants to talk about this. Oh dude that's a good one. Yeah I like right. that one. Um boy gets kidnapped. Goes to space, has adventures with aliens, falls in love with Blue Girl. Guardians of the Galaxy. There you go. That one was easy. I was All hoping right. to throw you off with Avatar, but... Didn't. This one's pretty simple. Okay. But I don't know if you've watched... I, 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 I imagine you've watched the movie. I just don't know. Uh, Don Knotts tries to fuck a fish. <laughs> God damn you, Beaver. I can't even... Don Go ahead, just say it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Don Knotts tries to fuck a fish. It's the incredible Mr. Limpet. <laughs> Have you ever, have I know. You ever seen Here's that the problem. One? The 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 right when you said it, the the remember the um the cover of the movie was just him and a bass staring at each other. Yeah. And I'm thinking, dude, he wants to tap that bass. <laughs> She's got a big mouth, bro. <laughs> oh my god. She swallowed him hook, line, and sinker. <laughs> hey dude, do you think when they're begging if 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 the tail slaps again and he's actually slapping cheeks? <laughs> slapping cheeks. Oh, oh, that's well, Don Knotts wants gills, to bang dude, a so fish. Funny. Yeah, Don Knotts mm. Don Knotts wants to fuck a fish, dude. That's basically dude. what the movie's about. <laughs> those are great. I mean, I'll be honest with you. Two of them I took off the internet. Uh, the rest of them I made up. But it was one of those things, like, because I was trying to find movies that you know you can describe, but it's like at some point you start like over explaining, right? And and it's like 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 the the Guardians of the Galaxy one. I totally gave it away, right? Um, you know, but it's like the ones I like are the ones that are just quick, just like guy wants to bang Siri, her, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But well, like Don Knotts wants to fuck a fish. That was pretty quick. Dude, that's, that's, that's great. <laughs> that, that makes my evening. I can end on that and be super happy. <laughs> well, that's not in there. No. Um, so, so, so there's, so there's actually an event going on near you right now, correct? Yeah. So once a year. Middle of August, we have uh, Burger Week. Um, and the funny thing was, before, when we were sending each other ideas for the show, right. I wanted to do uh, burgers anyways. I was going to talk to you about, like, you know, what do you like on them, like, stuff like that. You know, because it's a great, I've been, I don't know why, even before this, I was on a burger kick lately. Right. And uh, I was just, it's it's one of those simple, good foods. There's so much you could do with it. Um, and then I totally forgot today, uh, as we're recording, Burger Week starts. And what they do is they, uh, in the one of the papers here, the, uh, the Portland Weekly, um, they go to a ton of restaurants in the area. And sometimes it'll be up to like 50 and they all do a burger for like five or six bucks. And it's like special for them during this event. And they just try to go over the top or do something great, but it's affordable. 
And there used to be a lot of rules, you know, and like they say, hey, you know, they make it cheap, so tip them well and take care of them. Um, right. Due to COVID and stuff, it's sort of changed. I think there's only 10 this year. I got to check the list. I mean, I have it in front of it. I got to actually look through it. Um, and they actually let you take them to go because you used to not be able to do that. They wanted you to go sit and be a patron and, you know, buy beers and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. But course. it's fun because there's like, they're like, they're not just like, you know, just a regular cheeseburger. Like I remember a couple years ago when I did, I went to this, there was this, um, there's a bar out here called Church. And they did the Dirty Bangkok. And it was like, it was like almost like a Bon Me burger. And it was probably my favorite one that year. And then the other ones I read on the list, I was like, I was really excited for this one at Double Barrel Whiskey Lounge. Um, and I show up and it was like they were doing candy, deep, deep fried, beer battered candy, ginger, you know, like a special wow. mustard sauce. And, all. and it, it sounded like the best burger. And it was actually the worst one I had of that. Oh, okay. And so it's surprising to you too, because you're like, you get all excited and you go and you're like, oh, that's not as good as I wanted or this and that. Like that was uh, the first time I ever tried a donut burger. Have you ever had a donut burger, B-Word? No. I will tell you this. It's actually pretty damn good. And I've always been on the fence about it until I had one. And it did actually change. change. But I think it's also how they did it. They didn't just strap two, uh, you know two glazed donuts on it. They grilled the glazed donuts with the burger in between it, almost like oh, a grilled really? cheese. And it was, it was really delicious. But like, for example, this year, um, there's one, uh, there's a place called Loyal Legion and they're doing the Hello Pino burger. And the thing I like is the, the, before the week starts, uh, the Portland Weekly releases an article and it gives you things like, are minors allowed here? Is there takeout? Is there delivery? A purchase limit, gluten-free, you know, all the listing, vegan, all that. Mm -hmm. And then they describe the burger and then they t then they also do a pairing, like so this this one for this burger they recommend a shot of Jim Bean Black for three bucks, <laughs> and that's what you want. And then they tell you why they came up with this burger. Uh, but this one is a brioche bun, a quarter pound beef smash patty, roasted jalapenos, cheddar cheese, and garlic bacon aioli. Very simple. The photo of this burger looks delicious, um, and I'm gonna post up on our socials the uh, link to to Burger Week so you can see it because it, it's just a big event here. But, okay. um, like I, I'm going to, I'm going to ask you this. So I'm going to, I'm going to read, I, I read you that one. I'm going to read you a couple other ones and I want you to tell me which one you think you want and why. Okay. So the next one out of the list I picked was the local 66 bar and grill burger. Uh, they're calling it the Alabama slamma. It's a Kobe <laughs> beef burger. It's with Alabama in barbecue in the sauce. Of yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Alabama barbecue sauce. Smoked pork, fried green jalapenos, and cur cur curled scallions. Okay. Okay. Um, and then the last one was, there's a, a, a wonderful bar up here, Laurel World Public House, that I really like. And they do a pozole burger. So it's a quarter pound beef patty, guajillo bacon jam, queso fresco, hominy slaw, and garlic mayo. That one sounds good. That's the one you want? Is that because like you're from the Southwest and those are like comfortable flavors for you, you think or yeah they're good flavors plus i really like um what was the jam you said guajillo guajillo bacon jam yeah yeah that's that's what did it for me right there okay so what do you like on a burger b word to be honest with you man like uh, burgers are you know they're kind of standard as far as mm -hmm. it's you know the meat and cheese and veggies and whatever but um i was actually introduced to a peanut butter burger that's probably oh, my, yeah. my favorite burger, to be honest with you. Okay. And so I've had it both with creamy and, and, and with crunchy. Um, there's no real difference in it to me other than texture. But um, uh, you do that with pepper jack cheese, um, some maple bacon, and you just do it up. And you, you do it on a nice bun, and you're good to go. That's probably my favorite burger. Um, but but um, I'm always a sucker for like a barbecue bacon burger with with like onion rings and stuff like a western burger like those are those are my those are my jams we do not get along then see i'm not a western cheeseburger guy and i know we've talked about this a bit i don't like barbecue sauce on burgers i like barbecue sauce on barbecue i don't mind onion rings on a burger but i'm a raw onion guy too i love right. raw onions right um I guess I like it depends on where I go. Like there is a place killer burger up here. They do the peanut butter pickle burger and it's great. It's one of those things that sounds weird until you have it. Yeah. And it just goes well. But it's like, if you think about it, it's funny. It's like, you know, people always say you don't put a, uh, you know, cheese with fish or something, right? There's those weird rules. And then you think about it and you're like, yeah, but I do it over here. 
So like right. example, like beef, oh, they're like, oh, peanut butter and beef. And then it's like, yeah, but then you have Asian food and we have peanut sauce and right. it tastes delicious. And so it's, it's stuff like that. But, um, yeah, I, I think if, if anything, I'm, I'm simple. I like iceberg lettuce. I like maybe a, a few pickles. I don't like a lot of pickles, uh, ketchup, mustard, and onions. And that's, that's really what I would, I would go for. But the reason I enjoy this event is because it's, it's almost out of your comfort zone too, where you're going and trying just a bunch of random things. Like I'm looking right. at this list. There's another one. The Mighty Moe's Tanker is a place and they're doing the barbecue burger bliss, which is probably what you would like. It's beef, white cheddar, pulled pork, malicious barbecue sauce, and a sesame beet seed bun. It sounds simple, but the one thing I like is they describe how they make this burger and they make it with beef broth. They cook it in beef broth and oven, uh, onion soup mix. Oh, wow. And so it's just one of those. It's probably like an explosion of flavor in your mouth. But yeah, I'm going to post this list. It's it, it's one of those things I just enjoy it because it's affordable. It's fun. Um, you know, the, all the directions are there. I mean, and, and these places get slammed. And so it's it's one of those places. I remember I, I was disappointed one year I went and there was this um, Asian restaurant doing like a steam bun uh, bao burger. Mm-hmm. And I went three times and the line was two and a half hour wait every time that I just had to finally give up. And really? I never got to have that burger. And it was so disappointing. I had a, and the problem is all my friends are like, oh, it was delicious. And I'm like, I'm sure it was. And I didn't get to get it. And I'll still never forget about this. But Burger Week became so big. Now we also have Wing Week in October. And they're probably going to come up. With, I think the, the, the talk is they might do like a Wiener Week. <laughs> but they'll probably call it Hot Dog Week. But, you know, go get some big greasy wieners and, uh, you know, go have well, those. I, but. So uh, these food festivals are really good. Like here, here in northern Nevada – Actually, coming up, we have the Best of the West uh, Reno Rib Festival, Reno Rib Cookoff. Have you have you you've been to that, right? No, I have. You lived actually. up here. No. Okay, so it's 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 great. It's expensive, but it's great. I mean, they have they have outdoor concerts and they've got a whole ton of vendors, and it's and it's really really good. But then also in um, in Genoa, right around um, Street Vibrations, which is where um, a lot of uh, motorcyclists come through this area, and it's a big tourist event. Um, they actually have the candy dance, and the candy dance has really good vendors too. So they they it's they have outdoor vendors that are, um, it's kind of like you know farm fresh type stuff. So they'll do you know um, flavored jams, and they'll do um, all of this sort of like like confectionery type stuff, and it's it's really really cool. Um, but my favorite one here in here in northern Nevada is um, the Taste of Downtown. So Taste of Downtown is actually put on by the advocates to end domestic violence it's their it's their annual uh food festival if you will and so they shut down main street and everybody is walking down main street and there's vendors everywhere every damn near every every restaurant in town gets together and they have their own little things and you buy a wristband and you get to get something from each stand and it's not always food it might be a drink or it might be a smoothie or it might be something different um but man it's just a blast and i think the atmosphere of stuff like that is really fun too especially when you have people out and about um if they have live live music or live bands or any sort of entertainment i think that that's always a good thing yeah, I like that. Like that, that reminds me of like Portland Beer Fest up here, where you pay, you get a wristband. Me and the wife went a couple years ago, and they they sell the cool thing is, so you go in, you get your wristband, like you're saying, you know, like almost like a food festival. They have food trucks and everything, and then you buy tokens, and with the tokens, you can fill up so many beers. And I mean, they do that too to sort of limit, so you can't get so plastered, right? You know what I mean? That you're you're ridiculous, but you can also buy a glass there that's commemorative for that year. And then it also has a fill line on it and you can go and you can ask them like, hey, can you fill it to the top and then you pay extra and tip or, you know, you give like your wooden nickels or whatever they're doing that year. Um, and then people collect the, you know, the the wooden coins and stuff too. And so it's just, it's a lot of fun because those types of things get you out of your comfort zone sometimes. Yeah. Um, you get to see what other people are doing. Cause I mean, we, we fall into this trap with food and I tell people this all the time where you go to the same places. Cause I mean, and it makes sense cause you like stuff there, right? Right. But I mean, there's nothing more depressing than when you go and you're always hitting up and, you know, I'll just say it, like the same McDonald's or the same Applebee's or the same whatever type of restaurant you order the same thing. When you go to these things that you might discover things that you didn't realize that you liked or flavor profiles or, you know, like sometimes smells are another thing. Like, you know, we eat with our eyes, we eat, you know, and we eat with our mouths, but you, you, you eat with your nose too, where you can smell it and you see it and you're just like, oh, okay, that's interesting. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and so I, I enjoy things like this. I mean, I... I'm happy that they're at their own restaurants and it's for a week 
because it sort of gets you out and about the town too. You know, I mean, I would love a festival like this where it was like a burger festival, but I understand too. That's like a little, that's asking for a lot. Um, where it was booth to booth to booth and get these people there to cook off site. So, I mean, th- there's the good and the bad, right? Like I like the Portland beer fest cause it's easy. You just strap a bunch of kegs, you bring them all downtown. Everybody can walk around and go to booths and get beer. Something like this, yeah, you need to have it in all their restaurants. And I think the Portland Weekly, uh, or the Portland Mercury, sorry, I keep saying the Portland Weekly, they did a great job of organizing this years ago. And it just became a huge, fun staple, and I look forward to it every year. And, you know, I it's it's one of those things, too, I budget, like, you know, I find out how many restaurants, I'm like, all right, I know I'm going to spend this much at least just on burgers this week and order a ton of them and just go out and try it all, and it's, it's, a, it's a big blast, dude. Yeah, no, it sounds fun, dude. I love stuff like yeah. this. It creates a good sense of community and also a good sense of, um, you know, just getting out and doing stuff with friends. And, you know, in the in the world of COVID that we live in, and you you know, man, I hate talking about COVID just because it's it's stupid. Like, like I just hate everything about COVID. But in the world we live in right now, I mean, it's a good it's a good way to get out and do, go do things and experience things with people, and and overall, just really good, man. But uh, before yeah. we bef- before we close out this show. We have another review from our buddy Robert the Bear. Yeah, he, so he did another one for us. He did. And so he ended up uh, reviewing Overrated Summer, uh, which was not our last episode, but I want to say the episode before that. And uh, he had a little bit to share, so we're going to go ahead and play that now. Hello, Jake. I listened to your entire um, uh, podcast uh, episode. I literally just got done with it, but I took a picture of a. It's kind of like a table. It wouldn't say a lamp. It's more like a um. To me, it's like a nightlight because it requires a nightlight bulb, and it is old. So it is a bald eagle. I'm gonna show you a picture of it. You and I and. B word and I have more in common than I thought. Even though uh, I am gay, pretty fucking girly, I titled this properly Podcast Perspective Review. Okay, number one, start out with a music that literally sounds like it's from a gay porn from the 1990s. Number two, I'm a Jack Mormon too. I was born when, oh, I'm sorry. I was I was born <laughs> I was born gay, but I um, was baptized. Let me correct myself. I was baptized Mormon when I was nineteen. Fuck! I need some more coffee. Fuck. Okay, yeah, I was baptized Mormon when I was nineteen in May of two thousand and six, and I'm Jack Mormon because I still suck cock. Oh, Jake, I don't know. What we're gonna do with this Robert the Bear guy? He's hilarious, man. I I love the. <laughs> I like how it starts out, and it doesn't seem like a review. It's it doesn't. like of a lamp or a night yeah. light, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Bald Eagle Freedom Party, though. I totally appreciate that. We gotta. He sent me a picture of that too, so we'll have to show that little night light thing. If you're watching this video, it's actually going to be on the video itself. And uh, if you're not, then check out our socials because we're we're gonna share it on on uh, on Robert's little logo there. But uh, but yeah, man. I mean, he sends you quite a bit of of audio, and uh, some of them are just absolutely fantastic, make you blush type stuff. And then of course we get the reviews in there too. So so thanks, Robert, and keep it up. Uh, make sure that you're sending those reviews over to us, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll continue to keep keep showcasing you as long as you're uh, producing good content like that exactly buddy all right man so it's been a fun night tonight kind of a early episode i don't think we've gone nearly as long as some of our other episodes are but uh with that man how do you want to close us out like always dude thanks for all the dirty talk and ugh, oh i couldn't do it b-word my tongue's oh, broke man. thanks for all the dirty talk come back and get santa damn it you're such a failure 